See, we have to understand when I said God made man with intention, that who knows that God had a plan when he made man, that God didn't just, he wasn't just bored one day fiddling in the dirt and he sneezed and a man stood up. He, he made man with intention. Like he literally formed man with intention and said, let us make man in our image. So he made man with a purpose. He actually gave him dominion. He told him to subdue the earth, to tend it and keep it and subdue it. Who knows that's in your Bible? So that's purpose. That's intention. You look at today. I made that little comment. I said, I'll probably get in trouble with this when I made about COVID. I wasn't trying to be high-minded or sound haughty when I said that. I, I, I just said I'd hug somebody with COVID. I, I honestly would. I, would. I wouldn't even think twice about it. How are we going to lay hands on a leper if we're afraid of getting leprosy? I'm just being real. We don't realize how we've been subdued by fear and how if we're not careful, we'll embrace a Christianity that's more survival than it is ruling and reigning and overcoming. A lot of times we're just praying to God to get by. We're praying to God to catch a break for things to go the way we want. So life, when we have that motive in our prayers, life is always the factor on how we're doing and who we are. The way things are going determines my disposition, my output, my emotional makeup, and my outlook. And all of a sudden, life is dominating us instead of the giver of it. Are you all with me? And we got to be careful that we don't slip into this... I hate to coin it like an Americanized gospel. I don't think it has to be that, but it seems like it can be that. It's like, it's this gospel that benefits me instead of transforms me. And that's why you have discouraged Christians. Because they've been promised all these blessings, full vats, full barns, and they're wondering when they're going to get their fair shake. And the whole time the Spirit of God lives inside of them. They can walk in love and live by the Spirit. You see what I'm saying? So we've got to be careful with a gospel that all it ever does is just bless me. We have to be careful that we're not just fall and pray to a gospel that just serves me without changing me. And the reason that's important is because God made man with an intention. And if that intention got lost and Jesus came to pay the price to take away the reason it got lost, sin, then it has to be that God wants to restore back the intention. Are you all with me? So here's the catch. When Adam got separated from God, he didn't just sin, he took on a whole nother nature. Everything that was in that breath that God breathed was lost. So the nature of God, the image of God, the love of God, the motive of God, everything was lost through sin and separation. Are you with me? So the Bible says in Romans that every man was born into Adam, into that state separate from God. Every man that's ever been born has been born in that lost place. Watch this. Separate from God, no true identity, not knowing who he is and fully driven by need. Needing love, needing value, needing support, needing to believe their life is even matters and is worth something. Are you all with me? Every person that's ever been born was born in that insecurity and in that need. Most of us didn't get half of the list of the things we've needed. And then that becomes our story. That becomes our identity. And that begins to mold us like clay instead of the great potter. So we, we grow up in a purpose, a motive, a mentality, a reason for being in a why behind our life that's totally perverted from God's intention and it's usually hinged on all about me, survival, making it, what about me, well you shouldn't have, well how come you, well I wouldn't if you didn't. Self. This is why Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. He didn't say prayer, prayer to go to heaven. And I'm not upset about heaven. I think it's amazing we're going to live forever. It's just not the goal. The goal is getting Christ back on the inside of you. The goal is getting back with God, right? It's, the goal is not going to heaven. It, it, we didn't win when we prayed a prayer to go to heaven. We win when we die to ourselves and put on Christ. The full payment of the cross of Jesus Christ isn't fulfilled. Like the dividends given back isn't fulfilled when a man prays a prayer to go to heaven. We say it's the greatest thing. I understand, but our motive now is just, okay, I'm going to live forever. Hey, when I die. And there's this sense of, yeah, man, I made it to heaven. I prayed this prayer. I believe I'm going to go to heaven. But, but it's all about heaven on the earth. It's all about Christ in you. It's all about go preach saying the kingdom of God is here. What about heaven getting back into you? Are you with me? Why would the scripture talk all about new life, new creation, 
old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. There's this language in the Bible about this amazing exchange from what was to what is in Christ Jesus. It, it doesn't end with forgiveness. Getting forgiven of your sins is just the very beginning. It's amazing. It's beautiful. He paid the price. I'm excited about it. I can stand clean in the sight of God. It's part of identity. We'll cover it probably this morning. But I, I can actually stand and know I'm clean and free from every mistake I ever made. That does something to my heart. That does something here. Like, I'm thankful. I don't take this for granted. I ain't like, oh, well, God will forgive me anyway. And go do whatever I know it ain't good. No, this is amazing. God did something through His Son and through the blood of His Son to wash me clean and make me stand before Him as if I've never sinned. Is that just so I'm forgiven? Or so that I'm empowered to live the life He's always intended? See, I don't love Him first. He first loved me. If I hear this gospel story of forgiveness of sins in heaven and I don't really see His first love and I'm more mystified by it and I'm more like... I don't know why he died for me. I don't know why he even wants me in heaven. I feel like so far away and it's crazy. He'd pay a price like this so I could be in heaven forever? Oh, well, I'll take it. But that tends to be more impersonal. You don't really even get it. You don't see his first love, so then you feel indebted to him because you feel like he did this thing for you so you get this long-term benefit. So I probably, and preachers will spring off of that. He gave his life. What are you giving? Boom, boom, boom. And all of a sudden, you're feeling like, I owe the Lord. I got to do something for God. Now you're trying to work for God. And then you feel like you ain't doing enough, and you're failing, and it ain't good enough, and you're your own worst critic. And you follow what I'm saying? And I promise you, Christianity is built on change. It's built on repentance. It's built on becoming something different by the grace of God. Not your works, not your ability. But you got to see something. you got to see that God created something. you got to see that God intended something. That that something was lost. And Jesus paid to get it back. So if you're just receiving Jesus into your life in hopes of a better one instead of a new one, that's deceptive. You're just incorporating God into your life, hoping your life goes better. People's marriage struggling. They say, maybe I ought to go to church. There's an implication there. I'm going to go try to get a blessing instead of a revelation and a change. Are you following me? Who would agree that there's a lot of people that go to church that are living discouraged? Let me ask you a strong question. If you're not self-focused, is it possible to be discouraged? If you're seeking first the kingdom, could you actually live discouraged if you're seeking first the kingdom of God and you're living for His great name? Come on, that's a good challenge. But we take this stuff for granted and we just expect we're going to be that way because we've always been that way. And preacher, don't get high-minded and keep it real and you got to relate. No, i got to relate to Jesus. I'm following Jesus. I'm not following us anymore. I'm following Jesus. I want to live by the Spirit, life in the Spirit. So we're saying, well, we always fail and nobody's perfect. We always fail. But if I live by the Spirit, Galatians 5, I won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. It sounds like God has a plan that's bigger than my experience. But even pastors and leaders don't buy into that because their own experience says that ain't true. And sometimes it's really tough to even just say the word and say the word and say, hey, th this is possible. Oh, this ain't possible. No, don't get high-minded. High-minded, we're just saying what he said. Are you with me? Why would Jesus do something so intense? To me, it's intense that God would put himself in the womb of a woman, come through her birth canal, nurse on her breast, get his diapers have to get changed, and he didn't have pampers with sticky tape. Be real with me. He had to endure life in the flesh and sweat and hot and bathe and hunger. He was God. Now he's in a body. That's intense. I think we breeze over it, it just becomes a story. And it's so that we can receive him and proclaim his name verbally and get qualified for heaven when the whole point is heaven coming back inside of you and becoming one with him so that you can walk in the light as he's in the light. So you can shine and let your light so shine before men that they see your life and they glorify God.